Hi students, my name is Ramesh and today I'm going to discuss very important board exam tips with respect to the subject mathematics. Now we'll start our session with on a very positive note with a very positive statement and the statement goes like this. It says winners don't do different things. They do things differently. Now this is the most important attribute of a winner doing the things differently and students that is what I want you to learn. By the end of this session, you should be knowing how to do the same things which you have been doing the entire year in a systematic way which ensures that you get full marks in mathematics. Now to do that, to do this, first let's understand that entire maths is for 100 marks and that 100 marks is actually bifurcated into two parts, right? 80 and 20. The first 80 marks which we need to get that comes in the form of a written paper which we need to write that is for 3 hours comprising of 30 questions. right? And the next 20 marks it is in the form of internal assessment with the schools. Now this 20 marks is actually bifurcated into 3 parts. The first part is nothing but the first 10 marks comes from the average of the best 2 periodical test which is taken in the school. The next five marks comes in the form of projects or assignments and practicals and the last five marks comes in the form of notebook submission. That means one thing is for sure we know that those 20 marks is very easy which we need to get from the school provided we do very well in the periodical test, we do very well with the submissions on time and we do very well with the practicals. Right? If this happens then we get those 20 marks but how do we get those 80 marks that is what we need to work for and to get to know how to work on those 80 marks and get that full 80 marks we need to work on three very important aspects and that is what I'm going to discuss with you. The first aspect is going to be chapter wise weightage, time management and paper presentation. The next one is going to be general tips to excel in maths and the third and the most important one is going to be last minute revision via Robomate plus and preferable order of the chapters for revision before the big day. Now when I say big day, I mean to say the day in the board exams when you're going to write mathematics in the month of March. That is very critical, right? So let's focus on the very first aspect that is what I'm going to discuss with you that is chapter wise weightage, time management and paper presentation. Let's look at the first aspect of it that is chapter wise weightage. Let's focus on this. Let's understand this. The first one is 6 marks we have it for real numbers and polynomials. Then we have 20 marks very important for linear equation, quadratic equation and the chapter AP and the next 6 marks is for the chapter coordinate geometry. Then we have the next 15 marks which goes for triangles, circles and construction. The next 12 marks is for introduction and application of trigonometry. The next we have is 10 marks for areas related to circle and surface area and volume. And the last 11 marks is for the chapters statistics and probability. Now why do we need to know this? Because this is how we have those total 80 marks, right, comprising of this. But why is this important? The chapter wise weightage is very important for us to decide the priority of the chapters. How we need to start practicing, which chapter we should do first. So we should start with linear equation, quadratic equation and AP because this ensures that we get full 20. Then we go on to the next 15 marks which is from triangle, circle and construction and accordingly we can plan the flow of the chapter, the priority of the chapter. Isn't that important? Very, very important. That is why we should know the chapter wise weightage students. Very important. Right? Now once we have understood this chapter wise weightage, we have decided the priority of the chapter. Let's have a look at a specimen paper to understand how does a paper look like. Now when you look at a paper, there are certain instructions given to us. There are five instructions given to us. The second instruction says that the question paper consists of 30 questions. It is divided into four sections. We have section A, section B, section C and section D. And then the next instruction says, yes, this section, it gives a description of the section. It says section A has six questions of one mark each. Section B consists of six questions of two marks each. Section C consists of 10 questions of 3 marks each and section D consists of 8 questions of 4 marks each. That is how the description of the sections goes. This is something which we should know. Now, the fourth 
instruction says a very important thing. It says we don't have any overall choice in the paper. But there's a beautiful thing which has come up in the board exam in this year. Paper pattern is very important. We have internal choice. But that internal choice is not available in section A, section B, but it is in section C, section D. It is very important for us because there are three marks and four marks sums. In section C, we have four internal choice, right? That means we have internal choice in four questions out of the 10 questions from section C. And in section D, we have internal choice for three questions out of the eight questions. So we know there is no internal choice in section A and section B, right? But we have internal choice in section C and section D. So let's have a glimpse at that. Let's see now. So if we go into section C, see there is a question there, observe very carefully. That's the question number 16 there and we can see that we have internal choice there, isn't it? And it's a sum from coordinate geometry which we have there. Let's see, this was the first question which we saw in section C. There are three more like this. Let's have a glance. If you see here, there's another question here. This is from the chapter triangles. So we can attempt any one sum from there an internal choice there, isn't it? Then let's see another one. Again, we have another question there, an internal choice there. And this is from the chapter trigonometry, right? And we have one more in section C and C there, we have an internal choice. So that means in section C, we have four questions where we have internal choice. Now moving into section D, in section D, we have internal choice for three questions. Let's have a glimpse at it. Right? We see there, we have a question that the very first question we had there, right? If we see that, yes, there is a question from, which comes from quadratic equation and internal choice there, right? Now let's look at another question there. We have another one there and this is again, we have an internal choice there, right? Now this is from triangles. Again, we have one more. We have the third and the final one in that section D. And if you look here in this specimen paper, we have this question, internal choice coming from the chapter that is statistics. So that means what we understood is when you look at the entire paper, it's very easy. Section A, one marks, very simple, but no internal choice there. Section B, two marks, sums are again very simple, no internal choice there. So wherever we require internal choice, we have it in section C and section D, right? four questions for section C and three questions for section D. Wasn't that interesting? Now let's discuss a very important aspect that is time management. Now why is time management important? Because we need to know how to manage our three hours so that we finish our paper not on time but before time. That is the most important aspect which we need to work on. Now how do we do that? Let's understand. First let's understand the entire paper. We know there are four sections. Section A consisting of one mark sum. Section B consisting of two mark sum. Section C consisting of three mark sum. And in section D consisting of four mark sum. The questions which we have to attempt in section A, we have got six sums to be attempted. In section B, we have six sums. Section C, we have 10 sums. And in section D, we have eight sums. That is comprising of our total 30 sums, right? Now, what is the marks weightage we have? When we talk about section A, we know they are one mark sum. So one mark, we have got six questions. So it is going to be six marks in all. Section B, there are six sums of two marks each. So it is six into two, that is 12. Section C, we have 10 sums of three marks each. So that is 30. And section D, we have eight sums of four marks each. That is eight fours are 32. And this is how we have those 80 marks. That is something which we had seen in the sample paper, in the specimen paper also, right? Now, board gives us for this 80, marks board has allotted us they have given us 180 minutes that is three hours but we are not going to use those completely three hours i said we need to finish our paper before time now how do we create a time management for that i'll give you a guideline it is very important one mark equivalent to two minutes that's the guideline on which we start creating our time management i said for one mark we'll take two minutes that means for any one mark sum, we are going to take two minutes. For a two mark sum, it's going to be four minutes. For a three mark sum, it is going to be right six minutes. And for a four mark sum, it is going to be eight minutes because it is very comfortable to finish in that much time. So let's go section wise. So in section A, we have one mark sum. So we're going to see the time to be utilized question wise, section wise, right? In section A, 
we have one mark sum that means for one mark sum i said two minutes and there are six questions there right so it is six into two that is 12 minutes will take to finish off our section a right section b we have how many we have two mark sums right and that is nothing but we have 12 marks in total and I said for one mark, it is going to be two minutes. So 12 into two is 24 minutes for section B. Section C, the total is 30 minutes there. 30 into two is going to be 60 minutes for that section C. And for section D, it is 32 into two, that is 64. That means this totals up to 160 minutes. And I said 180 minutes. From that, we have spent, we have utilized 160. That means we have 20 minutes. That's the time saved. And this is very important. And this is what we need to work for. This time management is something which we need to follow. Now the question is, how do and what do we do in this 20 minutes? That's more critical. What do we do in this 20 minutes? That's very important. Let's learn that. Let's discuss that. The first 20 minutes, the most important thing which we need to do is we need to check the question numbers. Whether we have written the question numbers very carefully for every sum. Because if that is not written, the sums won't be checked. So that is the most important thing which we need to do. The second thing is when we have done a sum on graph, see to it that we have mentioned the scale very carefully. We have mentioned the x-axis and the y-axis very carefully and also the coordinates of the points are mentioned very nicely. That is very important and it should be neat. That's one, one thing we should be checking. The third important aspect is sums on calculation based. Now when we see the entire paper of mathematics, believe me, 80% of our paper is completely calculation based, right? 15 to 20 percent is what we have construction and proof based sum. So the major chunk is always calculation based sum. So check this first, right? Now what do we check in this calculation based sums? We need to check on the final answers. First check on the cancellations, the calculations which we have done. That is very critical. Check whether we have done it correctly. If there is any mistake, rectify those mistakes. That is important. And then check on the final answer. Check whether we have to write the final answer there check whether it is written and if it is written check if it requires units have we mentioned the units and if you mention the units do check whether the units are correct that is very 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 important for us to do that and if this happens that means our 80 percent of the paper is error free right now after calculation based sum get into proof based sum i mean you talk about a proof based sum we not do the entire proof wrong students we know the proof, we'll attempt the proof, but it will not go completely wrong. So what would go wrong there? What would go wrong there would be the reason. Some reasons may, we may miss out. So work on the reason, check on the reasons what we have written, whether it is correct or not. That is what we need to check. And the last and the most important thing when you're doing those rechecking is check the construction based sum. Now that is very critical. Check whether we have drawn the construction very carefully. Check whether we have written all those notations, the measurements very carefully. Everything should be mentioned. This is what we need to do in that last 20 minutes. If all these aspects are catered to, believe me, we'll get full 80 on 80. And that is what we need to get. That is how we manage our time. Now we're going to discuss a very important aspect and that is going to be paper presentation. Now why is this very important? Believe me, it's the most important aspect. Why? Because this is the first and the last impression which we create on an examiner who is correcting our paper. Right? The examiner who is correcting our paper doesn't know which school we belong to. He doesn't know our name. He doesn't know whether we have been securing full marks in maths the entire year in the school. But he's going to judge us and examine our paper on the basis of what we have written in the paper. So that is why the presentation in the paper should be the best. That is what we need to work on. Now for the paper presentation presentation to be beautiful, we can't change our handwriting overnight. Can we? No. But still, how can we work on the paper presentation? Make it look better, beautiful. Let's see a few examples for that. Let's understand. Let's take a sum. Now, this is a sum which we have written. Now, this is a sum from probability. See the way. First, we should always have the question number written there. Very important. That's the most critical area, right? Now, in a sum in probability, see the way the entire sum has been written beautifully, right? It's the spacing which is important, which should be taken care. The next important, when we write a sum on probability, remember, the 
name of the event you have to name an event if it is given in the question beautiful if it is not question we need to take those right we need to name those events that's very important in any calculation based sum see to it that we write the final answer very carefully that has to be written very important right that's how we present the sum in probability right beautifully written very nicely written yes beautiful next let's take a sum now now this is a sum which we have from surface area and volume in this type of sum there are certain things we should take care when we're writing this first if you see write down the formulas very carefully right focus on those now when we see this there is an equation which we need right look at the cancellation there the cancellation should be done with pencil now the advantage of doing cancellations with pencil is when we are rechecking at the end you remember in the last 20 minutes when we are doing that rechecking if there is any error in the cancellation we can erase it and redo the cancellation there itself right so the effort is reduced that is very important the next aspect is we should work on the therefore sign put the therefore sign and put it in one line right so the alignment of that is important similarly look at the equal to sign that should be aligned that makes it look beautiful these are small small aspects which we need to take care when we actually work on the presentation and look at the final answer the final answer has to be written these are the aspects which we should take care when we do this kind of sums right let's see another example now this is a proof based sum right in this proof based sum if you look there when you write that you need to draw a figure the figure should be centrally drawn very important beautifully drawn then the given and the two proof should be there and the proof if you see write them very carefully and write them one below the other aligned with double underline so it looks beautiful and the next aspect very important is focus on the reasons the reasons is very critical write the reasons very carefully the opening bracket and the closing bracket write it neatly these are the things which you should focus on when you write the presentation for a proof based sum very critical right now when we do another sum let's say we have taken a sum here now this is a sum from linear equations into variable look here right now when we are writing this right observe this is a sum on time distance and speed so write down the formula there there are two conditions here so do write there as per first condition do write as per second condition very important right and this is a sum where you're going to substitute and resubstitute at the end so when you resubstitute don't forget do write there resubstituting those values now these are important aspects we should take care and do not forget the final answer is very critical at the end right now if you see the next question if you see that's a sum from trigonometry application of trigonometry right and based on heights and distances very important the first thing is draw the figure nicely beautifully right below the figure do mention the description of the figure that is very critical and when we are describing the figure right if it is a sum on angle of depression do mention there the angles of depression that is very 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 important for us to do right the next aspect here do the can calculations very carefully and do write the final answers beautifully right this is a small small thing so see the therefore signs in one line get the equal to signs in one line and there's a lot of spacing there this makes the presentation look beautiful there are small small aspects which we need to take care when we work on the presentation aspect and that makes the entire thing look good now this is a beautiful thing this is what about construction see the way the construction has been drawn it should be neat and clean with all the notations marking 6 cm mark there right there 6 cm right if you have that angle there the side there 5 cm right there carefully the angle there all those measurements should be written very carefully the marking should be done very nicely these are the aspects which you should take care and the justification which we have right it should be written beautifully beside that this makes the entire construction sum look good right isn't that beautiful yes beautiful right now this is sum from statistics so when we present us sum on statistics and this is a cumulative frequency table which we have drawn see to it that you draw the table neatly see to it that the columns the headings of those each columns are mentioned very carefully and further for that table when we draw a graph when we draw a graph remember don't forget the scale there that's the most important thing the first and the foremost important thing which we should mention there very nicely on the x-axis on the y-axis very important then do mention on the x-axis and the y-axis the informations required there that has to be written 
right? And this is some, if you see, we require a crink mark there. Do mention that whenever it is required. In this sum it is required, do mention there, don't forget there. And then we draw that OGIF curve and that should be a freehand smooth curve. These are small aspects which you should take care when you're doing that. And then the final answer which is required, like it is written there, the median weight was asked. So we mentioned that, that should be mentioned at the end. This is very critical. So what I've shown is certain samples, certain examples which we have taken and see how the presentation looks beautiful. If we work on all these aspects, believe me, we'll get full 80 on 80. So we saw, first of all, the chapter wise weightage that helped us to prioritize which chapters which we should do, then the next, then the next, then the next, right? That is how we plan. Then we worked on the time management, which ensures that we finish our paper 20 minutes earlier, we finish the paper and get into rechecking the paper. That was also learned how to manage those 20 minutes. And then we came on to the last and the most important thing that was the paper presentation. If we take care of all these three things, believe me, no one can stop us from getting full 80 on 80. Isn't it beautiful? Very interesting, right?